Hi, I'm Tor Allen with the Rahus Institute Solar Schoolhouse Program. We're here today to talk about solar cookers. It's project number five and six in your solar home guidebook. Solar cooking is one of those wow moments in solar education. The fact that you can boil water, cook food, and get temperatures over 200 degrees all in a cardboard box is pretty amazing. It also lends itself to a numerous uh, educational investigations looking at how conduction, convection, radiation all interact to provide high temperatures. So let's get started. The nice thing about pizza boxes is that they're all ready to go and it's almost as if they were made to be, become a sun oven. So fold up the edges. Now the next thing we'll do is cut a window in the lid. Measuring about an inch from each edge, we'll draw a line around, a border around for cutting. It's not an exact measurement, but basically you're looking for enough space on the edge of the box to attach your window to. And also around the edge, note that there will be insulation under there. You want to have the maximum size window possible to let in as much sunlight. Okay, and then let's draw a line between the marks for a nice straight line to guide you in your cutting. The back side, which is the part of the box that's hinged, draw a dotted line as a little reminder that you'll want to not cut all the way through on that edge. That'll be where the window hinges. A utility knife or an X-Acto knife are handy tools for cutting the window. If you don't feel comfortable letting your class use utility knives or X-Acto knives, have some adult volunteers um, helping with this part of the project or pre-cut the windows. A sharp knife will make give you a nice clean cut. Continue on around the other sides. Uh, the back line will want to score a little bit to create a bend. That will give us a nice line and crease from which to bend the window flap. Okay, the next thing we need to do is place the window. And in this case, I recommend Reynolds oven bags. Not all plastics are the same. This plastic is a vinyl, which can handle 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, some other plastics like saran wrap or produce bags are a different type of plastic that will melt at lower temperatures. So usually you can get a box of two bags. Each bag will make um, four or eight windows for your classroom, depending on the size of the window. With the box we've chosen, um, we will probably get four windows out of this bag. So now we've cut a uh, plastic window out of the oven bag that will fit on our window. Uh, we'll want to tape it on the flange of the window. Previous teacher has come up with the idea of using two-sided tape. So this is available at office supply stores. So we'll want to put the uh, two-sided tape all the way around the edge, leaving no gaps. And then finally on the fourth side, now we have four sides of two-sided tape. We're ready to put the window down. And you want to hold it nice and tight. Put it down and rolling it along. Trying to minimize wrinkles, although you'll probably get a few. Make sure it's sealed all the way around. And if we open this up, we have a nice window ready to go. Cardboard has nice insulative properties, protect, keeping heat from flowing through. They have a lot of nice air gaps in between. By putting an extra layer of cardboard on the floor of the cooker, you'll be reducing the heat loss but through conduction through the floor and to the ground where this solar cooker will typically be sitting on. So be sure to put at least one layer of extra cardboard on the floor of the cooker. Next we'll take a piece of black construction paper and lie it on the floor of the cooker. You may want to tape this in place to keep it from moving around. So we basically taken two pieces of newspaper, put them together for making one really long roll. What we're trying to do here is to create an insulation roll 
that will go all the way around the edge, the perimeter of the box inside of the window and not leaving any breaks for air or heat to get out of. So we want to try to create a continuous insulative layer all the way around the edge. And we can use tape to keep the roll together. One piece kind of tape that we found very useful is this. It looks like packing tape, but it's, um, it's uh, something you can tear by hand. So you don't need that uh, packing gun. You could also use masking tape. It's easier if we put the insulation on the lid rather than in the base. So it'll be on the inside of the extra lip of the lid. When we close and open it, it'll be a lot easier to get the lid open and closed. So what we're gonna first do is tape up the corners so we have something to attach the insulation to. So, let's try to place this insulation in the corner, bring it around, and then we'll use some tape to keep it in place. Okay, we've got a roll of newspaper around the edge for insulation. Let's now try to fold this closed. Tucking the edges into the sides. And it seems to be snug. Um, the next thing you want to do is look around for any kind of holes and uh, in the cardboard, plugging them up with a little bit of extra tape. These are potential leaking holes for losing heat that you've collected inside your cooker. Uh, we'll want to tape it on all the four corners as well. Okay, now that we've finished taping up all the holes on the box and the finishing up the corners, the last thing we need to do is put on a reflective surface for the lid. Uh, a commonly available material is aluminum foil. And uh, you'll see that one side of the aluminum foil is very reflective and the other side a little more dull. So what we'll want to do is make sure that the shiny side is facing outwards. You'll want to try to minimize the wrinkles on this surface because if the more wrinkles you have, light will be bouncing off in different directions rather than into the window and into your box. There's two ways to attach the foil to the lid. One is with a glue water solution, which might have a more permanent, flatter, um, and smoother result, uh, but takes longer to dry. If you're in a hurry, you can use tape. Here today, we're gonna use some tape. So as you're attaching the foil to the surface, try as best as possible to keep the foil as smooth and with minimal wrinkles. It's nearly impossible to have no wrinkles, but try to get as few as possible. Okay, we're set. One of the things you might add is a oven thermometer. These are relatively inexpensive and will give you an indication of the temperature inside of your box. One thing to remember when placing the solar oven outdoors is you'll want to adjust the reflector so that you maximize the sunlight into the window. So remember that the angle that light hits a reflective surface is the same angle that it bounces off at. Another way to think of that is, is basically adjusting the reflector until you see more light reflected in the window. This is an indicator that the sunlight is indeed getting into your solar oven. To keep the reflector in the position that you wish, uh, you can use one of these kebab sticks, um, taking a pen to poke a small hole in your, your uh, box, and then a small hole in the, the reflector. And then adjusting it there and propping it up. You can actually have several holes on both the box and the reflector as you need to adjust the reflector. A few tips for a successful experience with your classroom. You'll have different degrees of quality of pizza box cooker. So things that will always work are that melting cheese for nachos and cheese, if you want to make English muffins with uh, pizza sauce and cheese. Um, if you have 
good quality cookers. You can try making chocolate chip cookies. That'll take a higher temperature to bake. You'll also want to try to use dark metal cooking surfaces inside the cooker. Um, this will help absorb the heat and conduct it to the food you're trying to cook. If you're using aluminum foil or shiny pots, that will simply reflect the, the heat you're trying to gather. There are many ways to make a solar oven. In the guidebook, we show how you can make one with a shoebox. There are also commercially available sun ovens, and it's a great experience to have one of those uh, with your class, cooking brownies, cooking something while you're making the pizza box ovens. Okay, here we have an example of a commercially available solar oven. Uh, it has all the components of the basic principles we've talked about. It has an insulated box. The interior is painted black to absorb sunlight and convert it to heat. The cooking utensil is black, again, to absorb the heat instead of reflecting it. And uh, inside there's also a metal shelf that collects, that acts as an absorber plate. It's black also, uh, collecting sunlight, turning it to heat, and conducting it to the pot. We have a piece of glass that lets the sunlight in and traps the heat inside. Outside the box we have extra reflectors that are uh, set at a special angle to reflect sunlight into the window, thereby raising the temperature in the box. This solar oven can get up to three, four hundred degrees, and which is more than enough to cook uh, all sorts of meals. There are many variations of solar cookers available, and there's many more to experiment with and invent. Um, in this design here, we found that adding the roll of newspaper to this pizza box oven provided an extra 50 to 60 degrees temperature. And there you have it, the finished pizza box solar oven. Good luck and happy cooking.